again. I'll apologize for the delay. My morning has been crazy busy with extra stuff that I did not know that I would have to do. And it has been overwhelming. So I cannot say that this trade video is coming on time. It's hours late. I apologize. But what in the world is Brad Trilliving doing? Let's go out there and talk about this because earlier this morning we learned that the Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired defenseman Joel Edmondson from the Washington Capitals. And if your immediate instinct is, why Brad? Why are you doing this? Then, hey, you wouldn't be alone. Take a look at some of the replies here. This makes absolutely zero sense. The Leafs have a massive left D surplus and a desperate need for right D. Why would Trilliving do this? This has been a brutal deadline. Another depth NHLer, Ghoulie fan goes out there and says, so I'm assuming they're a Montreal Canadiens guy. Even some of the replies over here, I mean, Edmondson plays both sides, but at the same time, he is a left-handed guy. So we'll see where exactly this goes. There are some rebuttals, though. Both sides, 6'5", physical, UFA, let tree cook. And then you aren't the GM, and you aren't in the loop, so that explains why you don't get it. But, um, yeah, there is some backlash to this. It's not just this one tweet over here from David that goes out there and clowns on this move. But before we get into more of that, let's talk about the actual return from Frank Saravelli. The Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired Joel Edmondson at 50% retained in exchange for... The Islanders' 2024 third-round pick, as well as the Chicago 2025 fifth-round pick. Toronto is still in play to make moves. Now, when it comes to this entire thing from the Leafs' perspective, they have to put somebody on waivers in order to make this work. William Lagason is the guy. Our assumption is that Lagason will be placed on waivers at noon today and assigned to waivers non-roster until he clears in order to open up a roster spot for Edmondson, and that appears to be the case here as the updates say that Lagason is on the move down to the Marlies. So if he gets claimed... He'll go somewhere else, but for now, he will be a part of that waiver wire. As for the Washington Capitals, though, Sarah Valley does go out there and say this, that the Edmondson trade, from the Capitals' perspective, is quality asset management. They traded for Edmondson last summer. They tried to improve their blue line to make the playoffs, and they decided to move along when they fell short. July 1st, in, Edmondson, 50% retained for a third and a seventh, and today, going out, it's a third and a fifth for Edmondson at 50% retained. So, this is actually a pretty good piece of business from the Capitals' point of view. If you take a look at Edmondson and his cap hit, $1.75 million against the Capitals' cap hit, and that gets cut in half even more. So, the initial $3.5 million a season that he was making when he was initially signed by the... Montreal Canadiens, that's now down to what's 1.75 divided by 2. That's going to be an $875,000 cap hit for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and that honestly is pretty helpful for the profile that Joel Edmondson brings. 30 years old, 6'5", 225, left-handed guy, big defenseman who can play both sides, and he was a part of a Montreal Canadiens decor that went to the Stanley Cup Finals. I remember talking about Edmondson when he was initially traded to Montreal in the first place. It was a pretty big deal because they were loading up on these big... Big dudes, Ben Sherratt, Shea Weber, Jeff Petrie, Edmondson. Not really the best offensive guys. I mean, Jeff Petrie was kind of there, but these guys could just bully the hell out of you. And that's why Edmondson worked so well with this decor. He only had six points in 22 games when they went to the Stanley Cup Finals, but as a guy who has already won a Stanley Cup himself with the St. Louis Blues in 2019, this was a really good addition to that locker room. He had six points in 44 games played this season with the Washington Capitals, a pretty steep decline from the 13 points he had in 61 games played last year with the Canadians, but with double salary retained, I could honestly understand why the Maple Leafs are going out there and making this move. It's just, if you think about it from the optics point of view, you could also see why there's some frustration. Not only was that tweet from David the one that went out there and blasted this, but if you go over to the R Hockey thread, you'll see some people equally trashing this move too. Sources say the Leafs have acquired Edmondson from the Capitals. First one goes out there and says, have the Leafs considered trading for somebody good instead? The Leafs don't have the money to trade for somebody good. 
they may have the option to open up for a million, considering they still up picks, whatever that means, to retain on Edmondson and Labushkin, they may still plan to use that extra money they have. Another reply goes out there and says this is the most trilling trade of all trades. Two depth defensemen in Labushkin and Edmondson and a fourth liner. Yep, that is the thing. Calgary had more playoff success in a trail living than the Leafs did under Dubas, though, so you could go out there and say that. Steady Eddie made no friends in that series against Toronto, both on the ice and the fan base, and I think that Leafs fans will be happy to have him on their side this time. What are the odds of him getting suspended? Yep, yeah, that's extremely high. That does still exist here because Edmondson, with his physicality, definitely wasn't the cleanest whistle out there. We'll see what exactly happens this time around. If he does what he did to Simmons with a Leafs jersey on, he is gone for the playoffs. Yep, that's kind of funny. But insert the clip of Eddie cross-checking Wayne Simmons. I still have no idea how he didn't even get a fine for that. Easy, because George Peros is crap at his job. Caps retaining 50% and Montreal already retaining 50 Good deal for depth. People just have no hockey knowledge on this subreddit. And in my opinion, Waffles or Bus says, this is a Lilligren replacement competitor, and the cost is fine. People just see left-handed D and turn their brain off. I'm not seeing a lot of brains on here today to begin with. So even though there may be a lot of trashing on this entire thing, oh yeah, Edmondson is a left-handed guy, why are they getting him? He's not really going to be useful. At the end of the day, Brad Trilliving has made it clear from the very beginning that he wanted to emphasize that toughness. It's why they got Domi, it's why they got Tyler Bertuzzi, it's why they have Ryan Reeves, and when it comes to the defense core, I mean, he's trying to do that same thing here. We saw how effective Edmondson and those other Canadians guys were against the Toronto Maple Leafs in that first round series in 2021, so now you're going to have yourselves a switching of the jerseys and hopefully a guy who can be a brute force against a Boston Bruins team in the first round this upcoming playoffs, maybe? Also for the Capitals, I mean, we have to keep on talking about them because they're literally the team that sent him over to Toronto. It's pretty good considering the fact that he was a useful player that was utilized and was valued. And I mean, look, the asset management makes sense. They traded a third and a seventh to get him. They got a third and a fifth for him. So all in all, in terms of what's coming in and what's coming out, if you disregard the money, which isn't really that bad because he does have his contract expire at the end of the season anyway, this is a pretty good move in transforming what was a seventh into a fifth. So for Edmondson, good for him. He's going over to a playoff contender. For the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can make sense out of this trade, even though at the very beginning it may not make too much sense. You just have to think about why exactly this is the guy they're getting. For Washington, it's good for them. They're upgrading their draft picks. It's just a good win-win situation for everybody involved. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Joel Edmondson making his way over to the Toronto Maple Leafs and how this actually is not as bad of a trade as it would appear to be on paper at face value. Yes, he's a left-handed guy, but he is versatile enough to play on the right. Whether or not you're okay with that, that's an entirely different story because we have seen the switching arounds of some guys in the Maple Leaf system. TJ Brody, is he left or is he right? Does he play better on the left or better on the right? There are some guys where it's like, yeah, you can definitely tell Brody plays a lot better on the left. Is Edmondson gonna have that same effect on him? We'll see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. What are your thoughts on Edmondson heading over to your squad? If you're a Caps fan, what are your thoughts on this piece of business over here? And if you're a Canadiens fan tuning in, then what are your thoughts on seeing Edmondson on the opposite side of the pond this time? Thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rose 99. And bye.